Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call um, the meeting to order. This is the uh, 2020 goal setting session of the New Market Town Council. And uh, if our town manager can go ahead and um, get us started. Sure. The chair of the town council, due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Ex Executive Order 2020-04, has determined that the town council is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that we are, A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We're utilizing the Zoom platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the council have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through Zoom platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting through dialing the following phone number, 1-646-558-8656, with the access code 911-702-5727. It is also being streamed live on the town website, newmarketnh.gov, and local access channel 13. B, that we're providing public notice of the necess necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public on how to access the meeting using Zoom and instructions are provided on the town's website, www.newmarketnh.gov. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with the access. If anybody has a problem, please call 603-659-3617, extension 1321. And we would adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we'll adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at another time. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. Uh, we do need to take roll call attendance as we typically do with the right to know law. So I will start with the chair. Madam Chair. Uh, I'm here and, um, and alone. Yeah. Um, Madam Vice Chair. I'm here and alone. Council Sanders. Here and alone. Council Matthews. And alone. Council Kuiper. Here and alone. And Council Dumont. Present and alone. Uh, Council Finch has indicated he's going to join us late. He had a work obligation. So just he'll probably join us at about 630. With that, I'm going to introduce Rick Albers from Primex, who will be uh, facilitating this goal setting session. It's all yours, Rick. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Good to see you all. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as Steve said, again, my name is Rick Alpers. We've met over the years. With me tonight is Shelly Waltz in the top right, left-hand corner, at least of my screen. Uh, right, we're, I'm Zooming live from my basement in Bristol tonight. Uh, glad to be here. This is something I said to the counselors uh, who were first on. Um, I've never done anything like this before. I'm sure I've done plenty of goal settings, but I've never done it electronically. So this might be new for you, and it's new for Shelly and I. And uh, we're excited to be uh, with you tonight. Uh, I commend you uh, as an organization, as a community to, even though what we're going on nationally, statewide through a pandemic, that you still want to get together and talk about, hey, what do we want to do? What do we want to focus on uh, over the next year? I will say that uh, I usually do a list of these in the spring and you're the only one to call. So uh, kudos to Newmarket uh, for being on the ball. Um, and um, that's, that's, that's an important thing because not only, you know, you're trying to figure out, okay, what are you going to do over the next year, but you're also, you've got a little bit of a shadow of this COVID-19 sort of hanging around and how do we talk through some of that and what are the realities and you know, the governor has released, you know, what funding might look like this year, but what's it going to look like next year? And that's the stuff that just isn't predicted yet. You know, it just hasn't been given. So uh, hopefully we can have some of those discussions tonight. Hopefully you know, I won't keep you hours. I think last year we did it in about 90 minutes and hopefully we can do that again and, and be as efficient as quick. I think what helped this year is you gave uh, Shelly and I uh, your goals ahead of time, which is really nice. Uh, and so I actually, when we get to the part, I have another camera and you can see the easel pads and, and uh, I've got the, all your goals up on the easel pads and everyone will have a chance to talk through their goals. But Steve, uh, any questions about that? Tonight, you, you saw the agenda, you saw the 2019 report. We're gonna follow the same format, which is, you know, um, you're all gonna get a chance to sort of 
argue, not argue, but defend your, your three goals, your thoughts that you want to see achieved over the next year uh, to uh, have a chance to articulate that. Uh, and then I've started to uh, sort of preemptively consolidate some of the goals uh, to figure out, especially I see a lot of things around economic development uh, and zoning. Uh, and those two things sort of you know, came sort of uh, two common threads through many of the goals. Um, and then, so we can talk about that. And then as we always do is, is work with Steve and you to figure out, okay, when do you want this accomplished by? What's reasonable? How much staff time is it going to take? Because we can set goals and you say you want them done next week, but that's unreasonable. So um, we'll get to that at the end. First, though, let's take a look at back at, at the last year's report. So that the, the, we, were, we were there in June of 2019 and what you wanted to accomplish between June of 19 to June of this year. Uh, and Steve, if you don't mind sharing, can you want me to share the screen or do you have, do you have it up? I think I could share it. Hold on. Okay. Should be able to do it, Rick. Okay. What do I want to share? There we go. Okay. Can you all see that? Perfect. Okay. So let's, let's go right through. Let's take a peek at, um, 2019 20 goals and, and we'll ask for updates from counselors uh, and Steve uh, on where things stand uh, from last year so let's go right to uh, goal number one which is economic development and you talked a lot about economic development last year we talked about the Wilson farm property uh, continued shared services uh, continue to push the waterfront project which I'm, I was seeing a lot of in this year's goals again and continue sidewalk improvements uh, and expand where it's possible so I don't know, Steve, if you want to lead us through, you know, where some of those projects stand and how they did and whatnot. You're still muted. I, I saw um, The first one for economic development, which is uh, the Wilson property, we do have a proposal uh, for partial reuse with the solar farm going in. We're currently negotiating that agreement. The town attorney has, is working with the company um, and we should have that to the council shortly. Um, still working, looking at potential regional services. I think we're gonna see a lot more of this with everything going on now. Um, I think it's gonna put, probably force us to look more regionally to share services. Um, the waterfront project, as the council knows, we had the uh, unit age students do a capstone project and we received that uh, about a month ago and we've got to have the uh, Riverfront Advisory Committee get together to review it. And sidewalk improvements, we are going to be, um, actually we did not get that one done for the path, for the uh, update the sidewalk plan. Mm -hmm. um, quality of life, um, we are, I just received information on the 10 year plan and one project potential would be the realignment of uh, 152 and 108 are a way to not have the traffic congestion near Flora Ventures. Uh, they're, they're look, the Regional Planning Commission is looking at an idea. Um, we continue to advocate the urban compact of the town. I'm actually meeting with, we're supposed to meet with DOT prior to the pandemic about uh, taking over a number of streets in the community. I'm still saying I'd rather have an urban compact, but we're meeting to discuss that. Uh, ride share opportunities, we're actually talking about that as part of improving parking for the trail system. Uh, as the council knows, when the pandemic hit, we realized that the rail trail was a huge uh, tourist attraction when the governor's uh, visit your home state. I can't remember the whole plan he had. But um, so we need more parking down at the rail trail. And we thought maybe that'd be something else we can look at with the ride share. Um, and parking, the, the chief. Uh, police chief is wants to start look, uh, studying on our options. Uh, we did look at updating the parking plan, but that would have cost us $75,000. And we thought determined that was not feasible. And I know NCDC is working on as talking to the federal government about the post office. NCDC is taking care of doing that on their side. Uh, sustainability. 
as a, you know, the energy committee, I'm going to say is doing a lot more of this than the, the staff is uh, this year. We are, we have put um, solar panels on the public works DPW building to start generating energy. We've been doing, uh, improving our energy consumption in town hall. And yeah, I think that's, that's about yeah, I think we have not done a carbon footprint map for the community. I think that again fell to the wayside in early in late February, early March. So those are the where we are. I mean, a quick hit. Excellent. Any questions for Steve regarding that update? Okay, I'll go ahead and stop share. Okay, thank you, Steve. That was great. And it's nice to see that. You know, maybe all those goals weren't necessarily accomplished completely, but they're still moving forward, which is nice. You're still advancing. You know, some of those particulars, like the post office parking lot. Well, that you practically have to. It's like you know, moving a mountain sometimes uh, to get some of those agreements to, to fall into place, especially when you have intergovernmental agencies or public private partnerships. They're not easy uh, to to achieve. So uh, I'm glad to hear that. And certainly it's inspiring to see that your goal list ticked forward this year uh, and you took steps forward to complete them. So and what I'm seeing, what you sent me so far with your goals is a lot of reoccurring themes here. It's, you know, continue to work on the waterfront, continue to work on the parking. And so I think some of those goals are going to carry over into this year's plan. And that's not a bad thing. That is, some of these things just take time and effort and a lot of just patience, which sometimes... Um, I know in all my years uh, in local government, and I think Steve knows I finally just finished up after 15 years as a selectman, government moves too slow some, some days, you know, and it just, it can be painful, but the reality is that's what it is. So by you just ticking forward, it, it's very good stuff. So kudos. Any questions about any of that? Okay. So now's the time uh, you, you've sent me the, the, your three goals. Uh, what you would like to achieve over the next year. You know, what do you want your community to do? Where do you want it to go? What, who do you want it to be? Uh, and you've heard me say these, these sort of phrases over the years, and it's just, I try to keep it simple, you know, and I, that's why I love these year-to-year -year goals because they're, though they're complex trying to achieve them, but they're really simple goals. You're not trying to, you know, reduce the nation's carbon footprint by 2050 by X amount of percent. You know, you're trying to improve your parking. You're trying to deliver services more efficiently to the public. Stuff that people use every day and they interact with in your local community. So um, now's the time to, to, to share those. So um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, we'll start with you if that's okay. Your three goals. Um, do you want me to go through what they are or? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Is that, is that okay? That way, do you want me? Can you, I don't know exactly, I don't remember, like I have a lot of notes, but I don't remember exactly what I sent, ended up sending to Steve. So here we go. I'll read them off to you and then you can, uh, we can do this this way. Sure. That'd be great. Number one was municipal uh, waste and recycling. Uh, number two was continue to focus on the waterfront project. And lastly, number three was economic development. Uh, as you kind of alluded to, you know, in these maybe potential difficult budget times, you look at the solar array, potential zoning changes, and you talk to parking. Okay, good. Um, I had them in different order, but I think that the, um, for me, just in the, in the, with my experience on the Energy and Environment Committee, and in some of the trainings that I've attended and seminars I've attended, municipal waste uh, and the, the future cost of municipal waste scares me. <laughs> um, I believe that composting is important. I believe recycling is important. Um, and whatever we can do to um, offset future costs and continue to provide those services to our residents um, is important to me. So. That's why um, that's my number one, just knowing what's, you know, some how the market for recyclables have has changed. Um, and the, I mean, you know, Newfields just cut out their recycling. Dover just had a tremendous increase, like a million dollars in their municipal waste budget. Um, 
we can't afford that as, as a community. Um, we can't get the cost of our orange bags to the point where, where we could shoulder a million dollar increase. So um, if there are ways to, um, to, to get around that somehow, I think that we need to explore that. So, so that's my number one. Um, yep, the riverfront was, was my second one. And so just continuing to work on that. I mean, I think that putting our, our expectation into, into perspective, given kind of where we're at, I think that without a doubt, we need to explore, um, the erosion at Shanda Park, because I think that otherwise we're going to end up losing our park, um, in the next few years, whether or not we can, you know, expand our river walk and um, have a pedestrian bridge. I, I don't know if that's possible to even think about right now, um, knowing that there are gonna be some pretty significant budget cuts probably, uh, mm -hmm. or these budget restraints. So, um, so that was my number two and then economic development. So yeah, I think um, getting that solar project uh, done, looking at zoning, that's a, conversation that we've had with the planning board uh, on, on some levels it's conversations that we've had um, as a council a little bit so uh, and with our economic development consultant and and so what we need to do like do we need to change zoning in order to um, further our economic development goals mm -hmm. um, and then parking and I would want to add I mean and so parking I, I consider that economic development um, and then I would want to add um, supporting our businesses through the next, whether it's the next several months or the next year. I mean, we've certainly done that, I think, but making sure that we're focused on supporting our businesses as we reopen and, um, and just through, I mean, who knows what's happening for the next year. Good. Excellent. Any questions for the chair? Thank you, so appreciate it. Thank you. Madam Vice Chair. Hi. Um, okay, so when I was thinking about this, um, just with everything that's going on with the COVID-19 and, and kind of feeling like we're not in survival mode, but sort of. <laughs> um, and also this isn't a normal year, so Normally I would kind of try to come up with some more um, things that we weren't working on before, but I, I'm kind of feeling like a lot of mine, well, all of mine were really things that were kind of continuations of. And so parking was one, walkability was another one. Um, uh, trying to remember the other two that I sent over. You said gateway redevelopment? Oh yeah, the gateway development. Parking? Yep. Energy, yeah. energy efficiencies being more yeah. green. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just continuing those things, you know, because I know there were some things that we were kind of had to cease on because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was thinking for this year to kind of continue those things. Um, and one thing that I think became evident to everybody through this pandemic is that walkability is really important, um, you know, that getting outside, you know, if you're stuck in your house and just being able to, you know, just to walk around that way, not necessarily drive somewhere if, if everything's closed down. So um, just making, that was kind of first forefront on my mind, um, just making things safe and walkable um, for the community. Um, other than that, I didn't really have too much else that's yep. unique. Great, thank you. We have it on there. It's good. Thanks. You're welcome. Any questions for the vice chair? Thoughts? Okay. Councilor Sanders. Hi. Uh, coming at this from a background of being a small business owner, um, I kind of centered in, like I did last year, on the business community. Um, I think it's really important, especially the downtown businesses, that a town have a thriving downtown section. 
um, looking around at some of the surrounding towns and watching their, their main streets kind of fall apart. Um, I kind of wanted to hone in this year on, on helping the businesses get through the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, besides the COVID, there's also signs now that in February we entered an economic recession. So I think this is kind of like the double whammy for the local businesses. So the first goal I had was um, to continue the work when listening to the business community and specifically working with the New Market Business Association. Um, they're pretty much tied into a lot of the businesses in town and especially the Main Street businesses. Um, I now sit in on their board meetings. I'm a non-voting member. Um, so I think it's important we keep those lines of communication open. Um, and like I said, they're facing a lot of economic uncertainty. I really hope we can manage to keep the majority of the businesses that are downtown when this finally settles out and, and stops. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to continue to pursue the waterfront projects. I, I agree with Tony that I think Shanda Park erosion has to take precedence over any river walk because um, certainly we want to maintain what we already have and not lose it. And the third goal was um, to start working with the new arts and tourism committee that got set up this year and find ways to develop and promote more programs, more forums, more exhibits that highlight the talent and the art of Newmarket itself. Um, to keep those businesses busy downtown, you need to bring people in to the downtown. So hopefully um, I'm gonna get in touch with everybody this week, see if we can set up our first meeting and, and start working on that. Great. I thought that was a great committee. I've never heard of such a committee in a community before like that. that so another kudos for Newmarket, you know, travel and across. The, mem the members who've signed up have some really fantastic backgrounds to get going on this. So my goal was to get them together, let them pick some officers and uh, sit back and watch them go. Because um, I think there's a lot of talent there. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for sharing. Any questions for Councilor Sanders? Thank you. Councilor Matthews. Sure thing. Um, so number one uh, was by 2020, convert all R2 zoning to R3 and additionally allow mixed use development in this larger R3 area. Uh, number two was by 2020, develop an urban compact zone for our downtown. And number three for the FY 2020, sorry, 2022 budget, uh, keep the total budget increase over FY 2021 to less than 4%. So for number one, talking about the zoning, um, for me, housing is all about economic development. So, you know, specifically the R2, you don't, there's no duplexes or multifamily allowed. And that's kind of what the R3 zone is. So I don't know really if you need to convert it to R3 or just change some of the characteristics, but I think it's something that we need to look at, which is basically our downtown is growing and um, allowing additional housing is a, you know, in my opinion, a, one of the best tax bases that we can rely on. Um, regarding the urban compact zone, I mean, this is something that Steve's been working on and I'm fully supporting it. Um, you know, being able to reclassify some of those highways from a class one or two to a class five really allow us to maintain it um, and take care of it. I think also that uh, there, there's an RSA that allows you to reduce the speed below 25 miles per hour. Dur I think it's like Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be nice to be able to slow down speeds in our downtown, make it more bike ped friendly hopefully get people walking out and about shopping. And then just, you know, the last one regarding the budget increase for 2022 is just to say, you know, 4%, it's just a number I picked out, but just keep in mind that, you know, we're gonna see the effects of COVID for years. And I think the last thing we wanna do is to increase people's taxes um, when they're struggling. So. Um, it's not calling for a flat budget or anything like that, but it, it allows for some growth without being, uh, without us reaching too much. Excellent. Thank you, Councilor. Questions, thoughts? No? Okay. Thank you. Councilor Kuiper, is that how I'm supposed to say it? Yeah, you got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, my big one was I wanted to designate a location for a Wentworth Cheswell statue or memorial. Um, I don't know if all of you know who Wendell Cheswell was, but he was the first African-American elected to public office in the United States, among other things. Um, he's got a lengthy Wikipedia article that has got a lot of really cool things he's done. And um, a lot of people in town don't know about him. A lot of kids that graduated from school in town don't know about him. And I think we could do more to highlight his 
uh, life in town. Um, just for perspective, a, a six foot bronze, bronze statue costs about $28,000. So it's not a crazy amount of money that I think could be fundraised you know, through the Historical Society. And I think if the town was to designate a location for the statue, um, that would be like the first step to get something like that um, off the ground. Um, I think there's a number like, of good locations near the, what's up? I just gotta let Rick and Shelly know, elected as selectmen in the 1700s. Um, in New Market. Also an auditor and a bunch of other positions. In New Market. Yeah. Okay. That's so cool. And, and I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of good spots across from the library. He donated a lot of, a large book collection to the library. So somewhere near the library would make sense, you know, near the high school. There's a bunch of places that would make sense. Um, that was my first big one. I think it obviously in light of current events would be a big um, move for the town. Uh, my second thing was reestablishing the economic development committee. Um, again, I mean, we talked about parking, maybe a parking committee, but I thought maybe it made more sense to have an economic development committee looking at parking as opposed to a parking committee that was just looking at that one thing. Um, and then the last thing uh, was just really specific um, was talking with the planning board about um, removing the ordinance forbidding non-attached accessory dwelling units, which um, uh, Councillor Cass had brought up near the end of her uh, term with us. And it's like the only, it's probably one of the only things that before I was on the council, I heard many people complaining about. And when I was on the zoning board, it was literally the first, um, you know, first thing that we dealt with. And no one seems to know why they're not allowed exactly. But um, I think also going towards, uh, you know, increasing density and the housing, um, affordable housing issues that would be a small step towards that. And, and again, it's like, the you know, it doesn't affect you until you've got a garage that's a foot from your house and you want to put an apartment in it. And then you find out the answer is no, and no one can tell you exactly why the answer is no. Um, so I thought that would be one thing that a lot of people in town would appreciate. Um, uh, and yeah, that's, that's it for me. Excellent. Thank you. Questions for Councillor Kuiper? Thank you, sir. Did we lose Councillor Dumont? I don't see him. Who's on the phone, Steve? Is that, that's not. I don't believe so. It could be a member of the board. Okay. I can, I can read off what he, uh, what he and both, um, Let's just get to it here. Councilor Dumont uh, had three goals as well. And uh, number one, complete a review of the new market municipal code. Uh, I think he, that might be a continuing goal. Uh, urban compacted to be enacted, which would another, uh, another sort of vote for the urban compact here tonight again. Uh, expand electric charging stations on public buildings. Those are his uh, three goals for 2020 into 21. Everyone get that? Was I clear? Okay. And then, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, Councillor Dumont is on the phone. That is him. Okay. Does he want to speak to his three goals, Councillor Dumont? I'm not sure. Councillor Dumont, are you able to? Oh. oh, he's unmuted. Thank you. I was shouting into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Can you all hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. sir. Fantastic. Um, so yes, I, uh, so my goals will just start with number one, complete review of new market municipal codes. So this is in line with uh, my, my actions to have a uh, committee uh, founded during our last meeting. I think it's healthy to go through our, our codes, our laws, our rules every so often to, and to keep a regular eye on them. Um, as Steve and Christian had mentioned, uh, the urban compact is in process I, or the, the discussion is in process. I would like to get to a point where that is enacted sometime this uh, this year. I think that it would go a very long way in supporting further development of our town and supporting both our local community and the businesses as well. And then um, in terms of number three, expanding electric charging stations on public buildings. I think that uh, aside from the initial concern that we had had or that, that community members had had when we put one on the side of the library, I think that there's been a uh, fairly resounding su success. It doesn't seem to have cost the taxpayers any sort of significant amount of money. And I think that it does a lot of really 
uh, it does a lot of goodwill for the town that I think that New Market can continue to grow off of. And I'd like to expand that out to some other buildings in town and to encourage more of the, uh, the eco-friendly electric vehicle uh, development in our, in our town. Excellent. Thank you, Councilor. Questions for Councilor Guma? Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilor Finch, I know, is looking to potentially join at some point, but um, Councilor Finch's three goals are of the following. Uh, number one, environmental economical solutions, uh, solar, going paperless, things like that. Uh, number two, making the downtown a billboard. Uh, attract people to the town, walkability, sidewalks, awareness, arts, tourism, conservation, land. a lot of the themes that we've already talked about here tonight. You go and start to see the weaving uh, sort of happen. Uh, and number three, waterfront revitalization, Shonda Park shoreline, the waterfront as a hub uh, was um, what this person uh, shared for the group, which again, it, it's, it's, we're starting to see a lot of commonalities here, um, right, you know, between um, really economic development. So when I, when I took those, so before we move on to consolidation here a little bit, and this consolidation is going to look a little different than it normally does, you know, hey, normally I, yes. Do you want my goals? Oh, Steve, I forgot about you. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Steve's goals. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one is what you're just about to say, uh, economic development and carry out the, uh, gateway plans. Uh, we've had the, we pretty much have gotten that wrapped up the economic development consultant and we'd like to somehow make sure that we can um, carry that out. Uh, the waterfront development, so look at the river walk as well as do the Shanda Park renovations. And my final one, which I don't think the councilors would know on a day to day uh, and their job part, but we need to really improve our technology infrastructure for the town facilities. Um, you know, we had a, a long time IT director retire and when it was a one person show. And, you know, whenever something's a one person show, you realize that, some, that it was done a certain way. Well, now that we have the uh, CFO, CIO position, um, as well as contracted uh, IT services, we're finding a lot of the infrastructure issues um, that we had. Then the pandemic hit and we really found out all the infrastructure problems that we had. Uh, so we need to start addressing that uh, sooner than later. Because uh, to be honest, you know, we may be done the pandemic or not, we're not done the pandemic, but we may get over the pandemic, but we're not gonna stop meeting like this. You're gonna have meetings like this for, instead of going to Concord, sometimes you're gonna be going doing it via Zoom. I saw an article today, it doesn't, it's not us, but Rhode Island has already said snow days are gone for kids because they're going to be able to do it this way. Um, so we are going to have to start looking really what our infrastructure is for our technology and improve it. Um, and it just makes sense because we can uh, save money and make it, make everything more efficient if we do. So those are my three. Thank you, Steve. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> So again, you know, uh, starting to see a lot of commonalities. I, it, what I was starting to say was this year might look a little different. Normally, you know, like stand here in front of you with Shelly, we try to consolidate and that's, you know, we're not there. We're not in your meeting room doing that. And so I think if we could talk through, I have some, some themes on the economic development and the zoning. Um, if we could talk through what are the next steps in some of these projects, like the gateway, like the waterfront, um, what are the, you know, then we can start to figure out, okay, because there are goals that are lingering from year to year, parking, things like that. What are the next steps? And then what, what do you want accomplished in those steps? And then when do you want it accomplished by? And then Shelly is taking great copious notes as she always does. Uh, we'll get that into a, um, you know, into a document and then get it back to Steve. And then, you know, perhaps uh, Steve and the chair can talk through it or maybe at, at, at a future meeting Shelly and I pop back on for 10 minutes uh, and talk through those finalized goals and dates, if that's okay. Does, does that seem reasonable to everybody? Okay. So when I look at economic development, when I took a, a look at, you know, all the goals behind me, the what you stated here tonight, first, uh, the first two sort of economic development goals that came up 
uh, multiple times, well, really three economic goals, and in, in, in you can name them anything you want, whether economic or quality of life, but it's the, it's the you know, complete the gateway project, it's the, uh, the waterfront river uh, project, and uh, parking is an overall theme, you know, so when I look at economic development. So let's go with the gateway project first, Steve, and, and council. What, what needs to be done next to bring that goal sort of to, to more completion? I think the next step is we need to present the file to, to the planning board. And then the planning board needs to work on some ordinances to be able to enact it, to change zoning in those areas. Um, we, you know, I'm not sure if the council's aware. I mean, the, the two ideas we, that have come up besides the, you know, the expansion of Main Street North, the, the town line, is that 152 would be a, um, I'm trying to remember the term, but it's basically a, a, a self-contained small community with mixed use. Um, for example, there's one in Dover uh, down near the old um, Thornwood Farms in this uh, bunch, and there's gonna be one in Portsmouth. So it's basically you have homes, small business, some small businesses, but it's all contained in that one area. So that's one of the, the thoughts for uh, 152. The final one, and this is, I don't, and again, we, we wrap this up right before everything hit, was uh, to look at the South 108 Exeter Street as actually as a recreation zone. Because if you think about where it is, you have the rail trail, you have uh, the golf course, you have the gym facility, you, you're close to the water for um, boating. And we do have all of our land out there that, for the Wilson farm, besides the uh, solar uh, farm part of that, that could be that we could try to utilize for some kind of recreation. Example of this would be in um, Windsor, Vermont. If anybody's familiar with the Harpoon Brewery is there. They have, it's sort of like you have some small businesses like the brewery, but it um, feeds off of the recreation in the area because they have kayaking in the river. They have trails in that area. So that's an idea for that South Main Street. And the, the other part for the recreation is because it connects from Manchester to Newmarket and potentially from Newmarket to Portsmouth. So you could have that, that stop on there um, to be sort of a tourist attraction. Um, so that's where we are with that. Okay, so those, that, those next steps need to come out of the planning board then is what you just uh, stated. What's the, what's the potential timeline on something like that, Steve? I would say by end of fiscal year 21, we can give the presentation to them. Uh, Again, as everybody knows, they'll probably form a committee and start studying it themselves. And then they'll have to come back to the council with any zoning changes. So I'd hope to, I mean, I'd hope to see the first one done by easily this year because we already discussed that. But the other ones, I think they just need to probably study a little bit more. What's and the first one? Uh, yeah. That's the North Main Street. Okay, so Shelley, the North Main Street might be, might be able to be achieved this year and then the other ones achieved in the next fiscal year. Just a quick question, Steve. I think that when we met with the planning board last, we talked, I could be wrong, it's been a long time, but we talked about having another meeting. We did. Um, to, to, for the, to see the final recommendations from the economic consultant. And so would that be the first step before we- Yes, make a presentation it? of the other ones, yeah. Okay. I mean, we have met with the, I mean, staff has met with the stakeholders. We've met with the people in the, in the areas of both those projects, uh, to, you know, cause we didn't want to go to, to the council or to the, the planning board with something that the people who live there don't want. So that's why we met with them first. And we just get threw out the ideas and they gave us, you know, some um, ideas that they had for the area as well. Um, I could say that really most of them got very positive and receptive. Um, so it, it, it's, that's a good step that there's nobody up in arms with pitchforks saying that we shouldn't do it. So you still need a presentation from the consultant on the 152 and, and with well, the mixed use and the yep. recreation zones. Okay. And so when might that be willing, might be able to happen? Well, now since we're getting more used to this, 
doing things remotely, um, I could, I would say sooner than later. I'd say, I'd say before summer's over, if we can get everybody okay. scheduled together. So by the close of summer, Shelley, uh, the, the mixed use option and the recreation option, council will have a, a meeting with the consultant. To remember, review. summer ends September 21st. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Labor Day. It's not Labor Day. It hasn't even started yet. Right? I know. <laughs> Steve, I, I gave you eight thirty-one. Thank you. No, that's, <laughs> that's summer. <laughs> hey, another quick thought about that, Steve. I'm not sure that um, if you you've maybe already had these conversations, but the the new owner of the the depot might be really i mean i know that we've, he's got sort yeah, of a lot was, of different plans but he yeah they've been involved really good we yeah. met with um all the landowners out there and i know like the golf course um they are and a bunch of people are very interested in the ideas cool excellent councilor matthews hey steve so just to confirm so the next meeting will be a joint meeting of the town council planning board for, with that presentation yeah they've always been joint Needed. Okay. Excellent. I remember if there was one that wasn't. Yeah. So that's a goal ish right there. Okay. Let's talk about um, the, the waterfront uh, project park. Um, we know that the river walk might be sort of a, a long term goal in the short term. I heard something tonight about erosion, erosion at uh, Shonda, Shonda, uh, Shonda Park. So What's the next steps there? What 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 needs to happen for the the waterfront riverfront projects? If I may, again, um, coincidentally, that today we got an email from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. They received a grant to look at, um, and I'm always it's the natural shoreline to look at rebuilding some natural shorelines in Dover, uh, Durham, and Newmarket. And so there may be funding availability to, to study it and see what we can do there. I mean, it's it, literally, I got the email today. So it's, we, haven't, we haven't gone through everything yet. Um, so that's, uh, that's really, I was happy to see that because I knew this was coming up tonight. So I think that can be addressed soon. Um, we just need to put some money aside so we can actually do the project when it happens. And I don't think, I think it's a good idea to include that in a river walk or to improve Shanda Park Riverwalk kind of project because it's, it is going to change the look of it because you're going to change from where it's all the granite blocks now to something more natural. And I think it's, it to, it's almost like a master plan for that whole area. So. Okay. Okay. So I'm just trying to think what the achievable next step is there in, in sort of a timeline uh, on the, the waterfront project is there is there anything that's tangible that you can grab and I, I think maybe within the the next six months I think we should have the the Riverwalk Advisory Committee review the capstone project to see the feasibility of doing that and let them you know let them advise the council on that um, because they're gonna they're gonna have to do a lot of the legwork on this because it's gonna be a lot it, it, there's a lot of work to it. Okay. In a lot of sales, so I think that's a that's probably the best bet is within within before end of year, not fiscal year, uh, have the, the committee come up with a recommendation of the council. Okay. Madam Chair, and do you think that um, it would make sense for them to work with Stratum Stratford Regional Planning, or is that would you prefer that your office does that? And I think it can, I think they could work with them. I think it's, and I, and we're, according to the Stratford Regional, we have very little lifting in this one. It's more of a study at this point as well. So that's going to come up later when we finally get the information from them. So it's, it's a good group to sort of bounce things off of as a focus group because it, that's going to, it's going to cost some money. And if we do it, we need to, it's a good way to say, hey, can we afford this? Who who's on the committee? Do you recall? I mean, I know I know Councillor Finch is our rep, and former Councillor Pike is on it, and I can't remember the other three names, but I I'm um, gonna pull that together tomorrow. Someone from conservation is that? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That gives us a little something 
on that project rather than just saying trying to move that that overarching goal uh, forward without much direction there for you. So that that's good. Let's talk. Let's talk parking for a second from economic development standpoint. So we've had some updates, you know, and, and Steve uh, gave some insight. What you've 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 had some Steve uh, Steve said something about the police chief maybe had something teed up or uh, in motion. Let's talk parking. Let's you know downtown where it's at where we left off from last year and what what we can do in the next coming months and you know. It sounds like you might need some additional parking at your rail trail. I think every community that had a bike path or a rail trail figure that out really quickly. Um, and I'm not trying to be uh, you know, a scary person, but this potential for a second wave. And so, you know, between now and November, is there something that temporarily can be done? I'm just trying to throw ideas out there. It doesn't have to be, you know, pavement on day one. It's, you know, can we find a couple extra spots here and a couple extra spots there? Can it be on a gravel lot? Yes, it can. Um, just things like that. So let's talk parking uh, and what the next steps are. Councilor Kuiper. Um, I, I will say the police, um, I, I would say rather drastically upped their um, parking enforcement in the last 12 months. So that was a significant um, help, I, I thought, to moving the cars downtown. Um, I will say, uh, you know, since COVID started, we have not had a parking issue downtown. Um, because there has been a lot of people going to the businesses, but, um, uh, I think one thing maybe we learned, um, this year is there, there I mean, th we, there was an attempt to, uh, to add some parking at Weaver's Row, which didn't work out, but I think that, um, it was a good step in the right direction in the idea of maybe trying to find a couple spots here, a couple spots there that are, that are areas where, you know, we, with just a little bit of change of, um, you know, really the, the paint on the, on the road, we could maybe, you know, pull a couple spots. Um, you know, we had talked maybe about, and maybe this ties in with Shanda Park, um, potentially where that fence is down there. We had discussed uh, where the wastewater treatment uh, brick building is. Um, so I think that there's definitely probably some areas that we could get some more parking that would not require as much effort as, you know, building a whole parking lot. And I think, again, with the police, you know, with, with us, um, you know, continue to encourage them to, to write the parking tickets. I mean, that goes a long way. And, and the, you know, the chief and I have had preliminary, very preliminary discussions. Um, the, we, we can't make more land for parking lots. I mean, that's, that's one problem with the downtown. So the other way to enforce turnover of parking is something that we had in the 50s and 60s, which I found a picture of, so I can say we never had this in town, is that meters in the downtown area. Um, meters are not there to make revenue, meters are there to open up parking spaces. And this would be a way to do that. That, you know, they're there, we could look at different options for that. I know it's a not always the most friendly and sometimes controversial items, but um, it is a way to turn over parking spaces faster. And again, I'll reiterate, we did find a part picture of meters in downtown. So it's something we had before. So um, we are looking really preliminary at that. Gotcha. Um, just to add to that, our meeting, I think it got, did it get canceled or it was right before all of this hit, the police chief was supposed to um, join us for a workshop. Um, to discuss that very thing. So, um, you know, I think that in some ways now is a good time to have these conversations because it maybe it doesn't feel as pressing uh, an issue. Um, and I think that we can certainly still do a lot of planning even though um, we, we're faced with, you know, this COVID reality. So um, I don't want it to stop us from planning for the future, for sure. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that, that, that really dives into the last part, Steve, and, and this is just me being out of municipal government for so long in, in that sense, but urban compact, can you just refresh? Is that an economic driven? Is that a, a zoning issue? An urban compact is that we don't have control of our own streets in the downtown except the side streets. Main Street, we have to get permission to do anything on it from the state because it's Route 108. 
Okay. Uh, we would rather have much like Durham, Dover, Portsmouth, Somersworth, Rochester in this area, the state routes through their urban centers are maintained and controlled by the, the community. Yeah. And we'd like to have the same thing. Uh, that would allow us to do to do more things with it, um, to come up with different plans to uh, for parking, for streetscapes, for everything now. If, I mean, the nightmare that we went through just to put those, to do the pedestrian safety downtown um, was horrible. I mean, I, DOT is a horrible, horrible agency. And I will say that publicly because of everything we had to go through. Um, but it, it, that's why we'd rather have our own control. I mean, to the point where the council knows that we do not, we're not trying to get any DOT grants right now because we just don't want to deal with it. No um, but in Urban Compact, we have discussed it. I've discussed it with the commissioner of DOT, um, discussed it with the region, regional engineer. And if need be, I'll bring it up with the, leg the our legislative delegation to just introduce it um, to Menly RSA to allow us to have one. Okay, so that was a that was a goal that, that that was a topic that came up a few times here uh, tonight on on uh, as a an issue of concern. What if we were to if Shelley and I were to include that in the list, uh, whether it be an economic development goal, whether it be a quality of life issue, whatever it might be, what's the what's the next step for you to push that forward? I think it's what I mentioned at the beginning that I'm be, I am meeting with DOT mm -hmm. to discuss. Um, taking over some roads. What they want to discuss is actually from Jerry. Jerry Ave actually isn't maintained by the town. So we take Jerry Ave um, down to one uh, South Main Street down to Grant Road okay. and maintain that. I Again, I'd say, look, if we can do that, why don't we look at the other way and take over North Main Street and uh, try to do that negotiation. And in the meantime, I'll also get in touch with the legislative delegation to see if any of them would be wanting to introduce a bill to add us to the urban compact. Great, thank you. So that helps Shelley. So that will help us give us some direction there. That's what I kind of had in my list of overarching economic development goals. If anyone else wants to scream out and say, Shelley, did you? Um, Steve, do you have a date in mind that you're meeting with DOT? I'm trying to set it up now. We're supposed to, we actually were supposed to meet um, after town meeting in March, but everything got switched. Okay. At some point this summer, you're most likely to meet with them? Within weeks. Okay, all right, perfect. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, so that's what I, I, I kind of, what I surmised out of the overarching economic development goals and that hopefully those are okay topics with you all. Um, that continues to push those, those projects forward, another step, urban compact, waterfront, the gateway, uh, parking, um, those are, you know, very legitimate economic development goals. And, and hopefully you can, you know, when we come back next year, maybe hopefully in person, um, we can push some of the, it'll be another, everything will be another couple of inches more forward for you. Let's talk zoning for a second, because I think there was, you know, there was a lot of talk tonight about a couple of councilors talked about, do we need to look at zoning overall from an economic development standpoint because of to help us maybe recover from the COVID issues a little bit quickly. Do we uh, do we need to look at zoning? Uh, I think it was Councillor Matthews that talked about uh, zone two to zone three, uh, allowing mixed use. Let's talk about some of those zoning challenges and whether or not you want to meet with the planning board. Does this council have the authority once the planning board makes recommendations to um, to zoning regulations that you you actually adopt those? Yes. And, Council has, right. council has authority. They can even do it without getting recommendation from the planning board, but we- I envy you. Do. I envy you. That is, that is a great uh, responsibility. Uh, and you can make things happen much quicker in your community than the standard community like I live in, where you gotta wait for things to go on the warrant uh, and be approved by the voters at a March, March or May town meeting. So let's talk zoning. What, what do you wanna see happen? And I'll leave it to uh, Madam Chair and Councilor Matthews, who sort of, I think, talk zoning a little bit. Do you want to go, Tony? Yeah, no, you go ahead, please. That's more okay. your wheelhouse. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think when you look at where our downtown is, where our sidewalk network is, um, we have an opportunity to allow development that, that I guess used to actually happen in these areas. Um, you know, our R2 zone, just, just kind of west of downtown, uh, we've got a great sidewalk network there. So if we can do infill, allow people by right to convert to duplexes or multiplexes, you know, we might be able to solve part of the parking issue because you don't have to have everyone driving downtown. Um, you know, it also provides opportunities for housing choice. You know, you hear the term workforce housing a lot. Um, I don't know about you all, the development that I see happening are, you know, $400,000 homes miles away from downtown. And so you have to drive. There's just no other option. Um, I don't I don't think those homes qualify as workforce housing. So if you combine allowing uh, infill density, you look at the detached ADU idea that John had said, I mean, we really have an opportunity to um, increase our housing stock that's somewhat missing and also touch on some of these other issues of economic development and parking. Excellent. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yeah, my only, um, I guess my, my thoughts about that is we would, we would need to really, I think, explore that with the, with the planning board and with the community for sure. Um, and so I, I don't know, um, I'm sure we could do that at the same time as the planning board, you know, sort of do our own research into that. Um, but I think I would want to work pretty closely with the planning board on those kinds of issues. Um, I mean, and, and with the community for sure, because I know that even at candidates night when this uh, was sort of brought up, there was a lot of um, a, a lot of chatter about it and a lot of feedback. And I think that people who currently are, are in that R2 district might not um, want mixed use development next to, you know, they, they might not want a duplex next to their single family home. So, um, so that's something that we would definitely need to, to discuss further. Is this something you want to continue to discuss further? Do you want to convene some sort of a summit type meeting? Do you, you know, what's, what's the appetite of the council around this topic? Don't all jump at once. I think that's an excellent question. <laughs> I, uh, may I chime in for a second? Absolutely. I think that it's a healthy discussion to have with the town. I don't think that there's, um, I, I don't think anybody here would disagree with the fact that new market is rapidly expanding and there is a strong desire to move into town. I think if there's any way that we can kind of pull back some of the perhaps government, you know, stops that would prevent property owners from really you know, being able to choose to live the way they want to, whether that means expanding so they can have, you know, whether it becomes a duplex type thing or they want to do more to expand housing options downtown. I don't think it's necessarily improper to have a conversation and to bring the different uh, decision makers to the table, the planning board, the council, members of the community, people who would be directly and indirectly affected by this. I, I think it would go a long way to, you know, continuing the good relationship that this town council has with our community and showing that we are open to change and open open to hearing new ideas. Great. Thank you, Councilor Dumont. Any other thoughts or if I may just real quick to the historical perspective. Um, so when I first got here eight years ago, if we were having this conversation, we'd probably have a packed meeting room and the council would I, mean, I remember trying to get a mixed use ordinance passed downtown and it got the planning board passed it but it was amended and watered down significantly with the council um it, it's just my 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 per, uh, perception is it's, it's it's interesting that we're now discussing it eight years later where then it was really it was extremely controversial um, to the point they were concerned about uh, impacting the schools, impacting everything, and whether or not we had enough water. Um, either we've got all, come a long way with our infrastructure, or um, which I think we have. I mean, we have a new school, we've got new water, we've got everything. But um, just that's my historical perspective there. That I would say four or five years ago, this would it would have been DOA without a discussion. Steve, do you mind if I ask? 
Do you think that that's kind of similar to how the conversation with impact fees went, where the planning board went through a bunch of work, it went to the council, then kind of got shot down, and perhaps along with you know, multi-use and, and impact fees, we are moving towards a direction that we're perhaps more open to new things that weren't really uh, possible before? Yeah, I mean, I think, so I think if you want to go further back, when impact fees were brought in, it was during the, the first boom of the 90s, um, and that towns were just having to put a lot of infrastructure in, and they needed somebody to do it. So they said, look, we're going to have impact fees, and that's going to help pay for uh, a lot of these projects. Yeah, it helped some, but not completely. Uh, there's other ways to do it. And I think a lot of it also, by putting impact fees, people didn't, people didn't only see it as a way to help offset projects. Uh, it also, they saw it as a way to stop development or to limit it by saying, hey, look, not only are you going to have to do your own development, you're going to have to kick in a lot of money to do this development. Um, so I think that, yes, I think that's part of the impact fee rationale too, was that, look, if you're going to be here, you're going to have to kick in and do a lot of the infrastructure improvement. And some, some developers just said no. And that's just that happened not only in Newmarket, but that was Southern New, the Seacoast New Hampshire in general when impact fees came in. Um, you know, a lot of, there was this notion I mean, it, again, it, this notion 20 years ago, or even 15 years ago, that you don't build multifamily housing. Um, you don't, it, or the term affordable housing was taboo um, because it, the thought was it's going to bring three kids to a, a unit and impact the school, which now is proven it doesn't. I mean, there's study after study that in New Hampshire, anytime new housing is built, it's usually, I think they said 0.5 children per unit. So it's not that big of an impact. And if anything, we're seeing the, the graying of our region and our community because of uh, just the affordability. So uh, multifamily would impact that way. I don't think it would impact the schools. Like you'd, you wouldn't see a huge population uptick. Um, but yeah, I know, I think that's what the impact fees. Councilor Kuyper. I was actually just going to say that um, the planning board had recently asked us to look at the idea of uh, the impact fees and removing them. And maybe that could be part of a larger discussion about, um, you know, just what we've been saying. So just that. So do you think, sort of to wrap this discussion, do you think it's worth at some point before the end of the calendar year that you convene um, some sort of a, a meeting with the planning board to talk uh, this through, you know, have it via Zoom, the public can, can listen or you know, public meeting, you, you, you film all your stuff anyways, uh, so the community can have, a, can have a conversation with them as well about this important topic. Does that make sense? Okay, I see a lot of head nodding. So we'll, we'll turn that into a, a goal, Shelley, so they'll talk uh, zoning, uh, proposed zoning changes, um, uh, to have a counselor Kuiper had his hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I would like to know what the public at large thinks about this in general. And if they're totally against it or whatever, then, you know, we could shelve it and move on. But, um, you know, I think that the attitudes may have changed in the last eight years. Yeah. You just never know until you get your feedback. You'll know pretty quickly, right? That's how these things work. So, you know, and one thing somebody told me once, when I first started in the, in the business was, look, you're not planning for tomorrow. If you're in a recession, you're planning for the next economic boom. So if we're in a recession now, it's not to get something tomorrow. It's to get something in the next year or two. So we've got time, but we've got to get it. We got to get everything in order. So we're ready for the next one. It's a good strategy, right? You know, how do you sort of prepare if you can at all for what, the potential fallout from COVID looks like. No one knows what that looks like. No one knows what the long-term effects are going to be. This, to have this tool in your toolbox and have it ready is, is, uh, is, is, a, is a great thing for your community. So um, the, when I was, uh, when I, back to economic development, I'll add, we'll add in two bullets. Uh, I wasn't gonna put any timelines around them, but add in, um, you know, continue to work and listen with the business community uh, and then, uh, you know, continue to work with the arts and tourism committee now that it's up and running. So we'll put those two bullets in there on economic development, but there won't be any, you know, hard return uh, dates. Madam Chair? Yeah, um, I just wanted to add to that other conversation a little bit that I think, you know, 
there's been sort of this perception about um, multi-family housing um, because we have a lot of apartments in Newmarket. We certainly, we have a large amount of rental stock. Um, and in years past, the conversation has always been that they're not paying their fair share in taxes. Like Steve said, they're impacting our school systems, they're impacting our infrastructure, and it's not fair. It's not fair to the homeowners. And I think that the the twist and the way for us to sell it and maybe um, the the overall perception of the community, I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I think that in some ways, the idea that the people who live in our rental housing add a lot of value to our community. And so explaining that and, and using that as a sell point that it brings youth to our community. Um, it also brings older people to our community and people who are, who, and people who often want the same things, right? They want walkability to downtown. They want, um, they want recreation. <laughs> they want uh, a grocery store in town, which we have now. They want like those, those resources. And so um, inviting that isn't a negative and it's just doing it responsibly. And I think that we can get there. Um, I mean, I don't know that getting there is saying you can do whatever you want on your property because that's where we'll get a lot of pushback, right? Like I think that if I tell people on Maplecrest that the person next door to them can build multi multi-family housing, whether it's a duplex or whatever, next door to their single family house, um, I think we will have an uproar. Um, so it's just doing it in a way that, that um, integrating it into what we already have, I guess. How do you strike that balance, right? Right. <laughs> And it's, it's easier said than done, but communities that succeed uh, generally find that balance on things rather than going to one extreme or the next. Councilor Matthews. Yeah, I mean, I think that just calls for, you know, an incremental approach to this whole thing. You know, just like Steve is saying, you know, we're going to start out with uh, parking enforcement and then we'll think about metering and maybe then we'll think about new part. You know, you don't immediately jump to the last thing, you know, you take an incremental approach. What's the most cost effective way to get these things done. So I don't think anyone would say immediately, let's let everyone do anything they want. I mean, it's probably not a great idea. Um, so you take an incremental approach, but then you also need to feel comfortable pushing back and say, you know, you know, saying a neighborhood isn't allowed to change for 50 years. I mean, I don't, I don't see how locking a neighborhood in and then saying you can't change it is fair. And so not every neighborhood should have to change rapidly, but you know, every neighborhood should be allowed to change and develop and grow as the town does um, in an incremental way. Thank you. Anything else around the zoning issue? Okay. So I think we, we I think Shelly and I have a, quite a bit here tonight between the economic development and the zoning, I, I, I wanted to ask you one last question. And, and that is the way I saw you all sort of uh, perk up when Councillor Kuyper uh, was talking about his first goal, which was the statue. Um, and I know that it was only his goal and it wasn't a, a common theme throughout the entire council's uh, goals. But the way I saw everyone's, uh, you know, sort of everyone perk up. What are your thoughts on that, moving that goal forward? And, and, and you can tell me to Rick go pound sand and, and uh, but what are your thoughts on that? To be honest, I was gonna try to get in touch with the um, individuals from the uh, uh, Heritage Trail in Portsmouth to see what they did. And if, if there's any agent or groups out there that would like to help us. Um, celebrate you know to celebrate it's a, it, it's one of those situations where i sat i was in leadership in new hampshire last year and one of the discussions was the diversity in the state and the individual actually brought up that that part of history that the first african-american elected official was from newmarket um in, in the united states and i thought oh that would be a great thing to celebrate and i think it's just a then that's a, a feel a really good thing I mean, we have a historic market for him but i think we should do probably more 
-hmm. And Council Burns has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Council Burns. Oh, I I just want to say too that um, I think it's a great idea. So um, I'm okay with you know if, if people want to add that to to what we might look into. I think it's great. That's all. Okay. Madam Chair. Um, I wonder if that is something that the arts uh, committee would look at. If that would kind of fall into into their purview, um, it would be a place to start anyway. Great, we can put that in the report. Councilor Kuiper. Oh, I was just going to say too. Yeah, it's it's a tourism thing, and it, I mean, in some ways, I think it could be an economic driver in the sense that, you know, linking in with. Um, what they're doing in Portsmouth, um, you know, I could see it being, you know, bringing people to town. Uh, you, you know, I mean, that's why I would be doing it. So I, I think it, it kind of falls into a couple of different wheelhouses. And then obviously the historic. Excellent. Anyone else? Okay. So we've covered a lot of ground here tonight. This Zoom thing is a whole lot more efficient. I don't know if you've, you felt like that in the past. Uh, even from your own meeting, Zoom is, is a whole lot more efficient. Bing, bang, boom, things get done a whole lot quicker. We've been going for about, uh, you know, hour and 15 minutes uh, at this point, roughly. Is, is everyone comfortable with the, the topics we, 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 we spoke about tonight? Okay. No one, we didn't, I don't think we set any crazy goals that says there's no way New Market, there's no way Steve and staff can achieve this uh, over the next 12 months. I think a lot of it is very achievable. Steve is, is giving the head nod that, you know, it should be good for him and staff to just keep moving these some of these larger projects like the waterfront forward. It, it, it's, it just, it, unfortunately, sometimes just takes years and it takes resources, which is money and yeah. things like that. Rick, I want to take this opportunity to thank you, Prime X Shelley, and also the council. I don't know, I think Tony probably was part of it when Friday we had uh, fac facilitators from Prime X trying to set goals. It was painful and long and it was never really focused and it wasn't goals for the community, like for the council and myself and staff to try to achieve. It was more a mix of goals for me and some of the goals for the council. And I just want to thank both the council and Primex for helping do this. It helps the, the staff with a much more clear vision for the coming year. Well, we thank you too. It's a pleasure to assist. And Steve, I remember, I remember that first meeting that you had you invited me to it was a very different council. Um, and this, th between the last couple of years and then tonight, this council was very different. And um, uh, it's nice to see you come together and find common ground. And what you all have one goal in mind is to move your co community forward. You're not trying to politic for your, for your own little projects. There's none of that going on, which is just so nice to see. Because Shelly and I don't all, we don't always see that. And uh, you know, we run into some interesting communities along the way. So. Thank you. And it's a pleasure to be of service even during this sort of pandemic. Uh, we've been remote at Primex since this all hit. Uh, this is the first time I've put like a professional polo uh, shirt on in about a hundred days. Uh, I actually even put some, you know, I'm not wearing a headset, not wearing a ball cap. So thanks for that. Like I get out of the, I got, I came downstairs tonight and the kids are like, where are you going? You know, because uh, uh, they're like, uh, the, the meeting downstairs in the basement. And they're like, what? So. Um, it's all good. Thanks for allowing us to, like I said, to, to be of assistance, uh, anything you need at all, whether it's, and Steve knows this, legal reviews and, you know, a contractual assistance and how do we open buildings and what do we do? And, and we're dealing with that it's sort of like a fire hose every day right now uh, across the state. When you think about all the towns, cities and schools and counties that we cover and the schools are really trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do in the fall? Uh, and there are just so many open-ended questions and they're all waiting for that task force uh, led by the commissioner uh, to finish up so they can figure out what school is going to look like uh, come September 1st. So and, uh, a, lot, a lot of things happen. It is. Yeah, we just, that's all we do all day is get new, more guidance from Primex and the, the state and how do we open something? What can you do? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's been different for the last hundred days. It is. Today's topic, as Steve knows, he saw the guidance was, okay, I, I have a, an employee that went on summer vacation, but they didn't, they left Northern New England. They left Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. They went to New York, upstate New York. Well, what do you do when they come back? And we've spent the last week trying to figure out with the AG's office and with NHMA and Primax trying to figure out, okay, what 
does that look like? What can Steve do as the manager that says, right, should I have that employee quarantine? Should I have them remote work? Should I have them get a medical sign off? And so it's extremely complicated. But I just rambled, I apologize. Thank you. Is that, are you good with us at this point or? Tony? You. Sorry. I think so. I had a quick question. I don't know if we want to let them leave, but I, I did have a quick question about um, one of your goals, Steve, <laughs> which, or no, well, maybe it wasn't your goal. No, it was someone else's, I guess, that was brought up. Um, or we talked about it in last year's goals and it was about the regionalization. And I think that you said that you saw some potential Maybe, uh, I, like, I'm I curious what that is. Yeah, I think what you're going to see is um, we're going to have to, we're going to have, we're going to, municipalities are going to be providing different services than we did before. Um, I mean, if anybody told me last year that I'd have to be managing a pandemic, I mean, the, the classic line that I heard was we're, we're, we're flying a plane and building at the same time during this whole thing. Every plumber. Go ahead. Mary Plummer. Yeah, Mary Plummer yeah. said it many times. I didn't want to say it because he's the assistant commissioner, but that's how it was going at the beginning. But I see it as we're going to have to look at much more health-related items in our budget, and we'll have to do it probably regionally more than we are. I don't think that we can have I – mean, it's interesting how robust of a health – a municipal health system Manchester, Nashua, and I even go Portsmouth and Dover have compared to the smaller municipalities that they can react faster than inspection and they can regulate things easier versus, you know, we're blessed that our health inspector is a former uh, fire chief um, with, with Mike, with Mike. So, um, but that's something we're going to have to look at that we're going to have to really look at more of the health side of it um, and how we, how we're going to do that with the municipal government, because a lot of it, I don't think any of us realize really fell on us too um, until it actually, until it happened. So I think that that's really the regional thing. Um, also, I mean, I, I, I'd continue, I would like to continue to work with the schools to try to um, share services. Um, my, you know, my doors are open to, to talk with them. I know the chair's trying to set up a meeting so we can speak with the superintendent and the chair of the, the school board to continue to see what we can share. Um, so I think it's still out there. I think it's still alive, um, but it's it's going to be different. Yeah, just a quick note about when you mentioned the health related um, concerns. That when the the um, uh, ASAP the new market, um, uh, uh, I forget even what that's. Doing. <laughs> the substance abuse yeah. group um, that we had. I mean, that was one of the real uh, uh, drawbacks to our community is that we didn't have any of the same, you know, what what Portsmouth res Portsmouth's response could be was very different than what Newmarket's response could be, or Exeter for that matter, because they had health services that we just, I mean, we had Lamprey, but that's, you know, really pretty small scale. So, um, so I think that this affects everyone in, in a different way, you know? So I think that the impact is just, is just bigger. Um, and so those, those deficiencies are really becoming more apparent to, to more people. So it'll be interesting. And, and to be honest, I mean, we do have regional health for emergencies, but again, it's the, I feel like they focus on Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. And even though they're not even the largest municipality in the group, but they focus on Portsmouth because they're located in Portsmouth. Um, but I think that's why we're going to have to really look at revamping how how we look at. And I don't, I'm not saying, and I don't want to say healthcare because that's a different issue. We need to look at health and how to respond to health um, for items like this. I, I, again, I mean, yeah, you know, this has been a, a big one with the the COVID nineteen, but we also had swine flu, we had H one N one, we had the West Nile virus, we had triple E. Which those were, it, those are sort of little ones that sort of got us pre somewhat prepared, but not not even close to being prepared for where we are now. Um, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. Do you see any possibility of regionalization when it comes to municipal waste and recycling? Like that's that's a it's question. Have to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We were uh, just talking about that in Rollinsford yeah. and their program, and they're looking for partners. 
And if you, in, again, about 15, 20 years ago, there was, which we're still in, the Lamprey Regional Cooperative, which was the incinerator at UNH, was the way that we got rid of our garbage because they burnt it, used the energy to provide energy to the university, and um, then it got shut down. So now that's where we are now. We're still paying for it, but um, we still have some regional pricing that we do. Uh, but it's going to have to happen because we're just, if if something were to happen in Rochester with waste management, Bethlehem's already saying to Kissella up there that they can't expand their uh, facilities. We don't, we would have the price to dispose of garbage is going to go sky high. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, Rochester seems receptive to continue to be open, but it's still going to have an increase because if Kissella closes in Bethlehem, it takes out the one of the two big uh, two big players in the state. I mean, there's smaller ones around, but um, and I believe there was Massachusetts was trying to prohibit out of state trash from coming in. Um, it's against the Constitution because of the Interstate Commerce Clause, but um, they're trying to figure out ways to do that. So yes, I do think regional waste is a is going to be a big issue in the coming years. And and the other one is for us is wastewater. Um, we still, we know we still have the Great Bay Coalition to discuss the nitrogen levels in Great Bay. Um, got a meeting next week with my counterparts in the Great Bay Coalition. Um, but it's, we're going to have to, we're going to have to provide the services to those smaller communities that do not have waste uh, systems. You know, they have septic systems. Well, they're going to have, they're going to be hit at some point in time uh, through the MS4 permit process that they're going to have to clean up their septic systems as well. Um, so we're gonna have to work with them and they're gonna look at us. We have, we actually have waste systems to take their waste. Thank you. I didn't have any other questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thanks for having us and we'll be back in touch. Shelly and I will be back in touch with Steve in the report and we'll work through all the particulars and get it scrubbed and uh, get your report in the coming weeks. That would be great. Sounds good. Good to Thank see you all. You. Good to see you. Stay healthy. Be safe. Thanks. Stay healthy. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. I'm ending the meeting. <laughs>